Hi, this is Dave with Rubbernecker, and um, thanks for joining us today. We've got a, a couple fun things to show you. Um, so we'll let a couple people gather in here and we'll get started. Okay, this is our new fall slimline background. It's a rubber stamp and it's nothing but fall iconic images all in one. And we've used a special technique called Joseph's Coat to pop some of those things up and make a card for you. So let me show you how we started off with that. It's, it's an interesting color the paper, stamp, emboss, and then color that image again. And it's a process, but it's a lot of fun. And if you don't mind a little detailed brushwork with a marker, um, you spend a, a nice 30 to 45 minutes um, without thinking about the troubles of the world. So the first thing I do is I want to know where I put my inks on my page. So I'm going to take the slimline block I'm going to use for this, which is a four by nine block that we have, and I'm going to mark it out on a piece of paper. I've got four color fused inks here. So I've got um, crimson from the red set, apricot from our orange set, grass from the green yellow set, and autumn from the yellow set. And I'm going to do these in an order like that, starting with the darkest and moving to the lightest, because um, that will allow me to use the lighter color autumn to kind of blend the edges of the other ones. Um, it's much easier to blend the dark using the light than the other way around. So I just use a circular motion right direct to paper. You can use um, uh, a brush to transfer the color. You can use one of the um, Ranger blending tools to do this with. Um, I'm just impatient. And this is much faster to get rich, vibrant colors. And that's what I wanted was the richness of the color. Um, yeah, if it's too light, the black overpowers it, or in this case, the brown overpowers it. Um, I just recently did this with our Halloween stamp as well uh, and used the black. On this one, we'll use brown because it's more fitting with a fall theme. And so now you can see I'm using the autumn yellow color and it will soften and blend in those edges just a little bit. But because you've used so much ink here, this is going to need to sit to dry. If you choose to use a heat gun on this to dry it, um, there's so much ink in the paper that you'll warp your paper severely. So if you leave it alone, while it dries, you'll keep your paper nice and flat. And the heating up when you emboss it will not affect it very much. It'll curl it, but it won't irregularly warp it. And we're gonna use, we're gonna let this dry, hit it with an embossing buddy. And we're gonna use gold embossing to do this and make a real statement with our stamp. So that's the embossing buddy that you would use, but certainly not while it's, while it's still wet. I just wanted to show it to you. We'll set that aside. We'll pull one out that we've already done. That way the <laughs> embossing came out correct. Uh, cheating a little bit, but I've been known to miss an embossing spot. So you can see how the colors just kind of float underneath the, the image now. So I'm going to take a brown marker that has a nice soft uh, brush point and I'm going to just color off everything that I don't want and I've already done this a couple times in preparation for doing it on camera so I've decided what I want to color and I kind of get a feel for where the images are and what's next to each other. Um, the first couple times I did it I wasn't paying too much attention and colored right over an image that was next to something that I wanted to leave the color coming through for. So make a plan and uh, it'll work out much better. 
the color will set on top of the embossing for a bit, but then it slowly just kind of fades off. Um, and I noticed with the gold embossing, I didn't have to do any blotting whatsoever or wiping when I was done. Um, and the gold was shining through. That will depend on the intensity of your markers. Um, these Arteza markers that I'm using are not too rich in color. They're an inexpensive internet marker. And um, so that's probably the reason why it didn't hold to the embossing material. So checking that ahead of time and knowing what your result's going to be will help you plan in doing this. And I did not attempt to use a Copic marker on this at all because it was a water-based bottom, but with it being completely dry, uh, the Copics might work. Once again, test that theory before you spend the time to do something that uh, isn't going to work. So we got those leaves going and we're gonna highlight the sunflower peeking out there. We'll just do a little bit of this and we'll, re we'll revert back to the original that's already finished. I always do a gentle line of the color along the outside edge so that if I'm off a little bit when I cut this away from its background, um, I have protection. The brush marker helps you get into all the little nooks and crannies that a nib marker wouldn't. And so there's the final one that we're going to use. We've taken a little phrase from a, one of our stamp sets. It's the, the Splendor of Autumn. It was from the 3019 um, Autumn Leaves clear set. So we're going to do the same thing again. And I'm just going to use our blue set. We use three of the colors from our blue set, not the darkest one. And I'm just going to work the edge of these across. You can see my mistake right away. I went back and forth, go in one direction. Um, that way you won't have a buildup of ink at each end. And I'm just slowly adding the colors to raise the level so I get the gradation I want from dark to light going down. And I will eventually use the lightest one to blend. And then I'm going to take a little drop of liquid platinum from the liquid metals from the color burst line and drop it into a mini mister and give it a little bit of a spritz so that we've got some sparkle to it and it's going to stipple the, the color because uh, it is water-based and it's still wet. And that little bit of moisture helps to blend the color just that much more. We'll do a quick dry, but not much because I don't want the paper warping on me. just enough so it's not wet anymore, but the ink is still drying.
but the water spray is not. And that's fine. <clears throat> so we're first going to use 5326, our slimline nested stitch set to cut that piece of paper out to the size we want. It cuts the largest one cuts out of three by eight space. So we've done that. And then we're going to go and we're also going to cut out a piece of white paper to do the same thing so they'll match. Then I've got the slimline insert that's a um, little a little window insert and we've cut out the piece of white paper and put the other piece behind it. We've got a Merry Christmas stamp in the middle. A Merry Christmas from all your gnomies. And we put three of our little gnomes inside. And we embellish the side two flaps with, with uh, little greenery and holly, holly uh, berries from the winter's bouquet set. So these are our slimline backgrounds that we have so far. And there are four of them. We have coffee and tea on its way. And there will be more this fall for spring events. So we have Christmas and fall and Halloween. I'm sorry, the first one was birthday and Christmas. So from your right to your left. So we're going to use the Christmas one in all its glory. I did not color these. Um, this is done by one of our design team members who is an expert with Copics. And um, I could not even get close to this kind of quality. Um, but if you have that skill, then you can do amazing things. Here's the Halloween I talked about earlier. A lot of great Halloween, some friendly and not so friendly icons. It's the fall set, which you just saw us do in the Joseph's Coat technique. And here it is just all colored up. And finally, the bright and festive birthday. So you can see there's a lot of possibilities with these four stamps. And we have had somebody custom make stamp blocks for us to fit these guys so that you've got those ready to go if you're interested. So let's take the color, the Christmas one, and we're going to use our large and small Merry Christmas sentiment set. It's a set with about 20 different stamps. Each one is a, a repeat in large and small. We're going to use that nested stitch set and the slimline insert set to make our window card. And we'll embellish it with a A little Christmas icon set. I'm going to use the uh, little Christmas tree off of that. It fits right inside of it. And we'll put that behind it. And we'll use this little guy. So we've pre-done that. We've cut that out. We've got our Christmas background behind it. We're going to put a phrase on the front of it. <clears throat> and then I'll show you how we cut out a couple of those little Christmas trees. It's a Versafine Claire Nocturne pad. Gives me a beautiful black stamp. So 
So I've pre-cut <clears throat> our little Christmas icon set with all the colors I'm going to use. And so I'll gather those along here. We'll use a Christmas tree on either of those two side panels. Pop out two of everything. It's like Noah's Ark. And Kitty Caracciolo, who is our resident paper design expert, I'm sure when she sees this, will chuckle. Dave is actually doing a die cut. It's so far out of my wheelhouse, it's not even funny. And I realized I took on one of the smallest little pieces I could possibly have done. And uh, my 70-year-old hands don't have the dexterity they used to, so it's going to be an interesting process here to see if I can do this. So now I've got these three pieces for the Christmas tree and I'm thinking to myself, am I supposed to layer these a little bit or just stack them next to each other? So I'm going to stack them next to each other. But as soon as I do that, I realize that it probably should be just layered just a bit. I'm not really sure how they were designed to go, but no, it's not looking too bad. I might not be wrong. I'm sure Kitty will let me know that I am. Not that she's a one of those that says I told you so, but... Yes, she's not. I've got three little dots that go on to simulate ornaments. Very cute little, simple little thing. But something, once again, that's difficult to do with just one piece of paper. We like our die cuts to be a little bit more complex than the average die cut company. Um, lots of little pieces. If you've ever purchased our train and tried to put that together, um, there is a, an instruction sheet on the website and you'll, you'll know that you needed it because um, there's so many pieces that you need to have instruction to do it. But with those instructions, it's very easy. So it looks like I'm going to get away with uh, getting this done without making any egregious mistakes. That doesn't happen very often. Here we have a cute little simple card on the outside, space inside for a much larger sentiment. And when you pop open the windows, you see all the excitement of Christmas. Kind of like a little a mini advent calendar. My grandson Owen would say, how come it isn't Star Wars inside? That's all I want for Christmas. Or Super Mario. So I hope you've enjoyed these.